Skyrim is 10 years old today. I was still a young lad in high school when this game came out, and now I'm an old man with bad knees. I didn't take an arrow to the knee, though, fortunately. If you're jumping into Skyrim for the first time with the Anniversary Edition, or you're a veteran at Dovahkiin, this video is filled with beginner and advanced tips to get you back into Skyrim. Let's go. This video is brought to you by you. If you have ever played Skyrim, I want you to let me know in the comments down below how many of these tips you didn't know. There's plenty of tips. I think we've got like 30 tips in this video. Let me know the ones that you didn't know down in the comments below. Maybe there's a prize if you didn't know any of them. Who knows? Chapters, as always, are available down below if you're looking for some. I've also put some kind of unknown tips towards the end of this video, so be sure to check them out. Now, we're going to start off with earning gold fast. And if you're looking for honest work and you don't want to steal your way through Skyrim, you can chop wood and work in the mines or even harvest produce at all the local farms and sell it to the owners of those farms or wood, etc. And they'll give you gold in return. You should be picking up most of the gear that you find out in the world. Not everything, because there's a lot of weighted things like shears shields and armor that is pretty heavy, but braces and boots and, you know, steel daggers, weapons that are really light that have a high value, definitely pick all of those up. Before selling these goods, however, go to a beggar in the town and give them one gold. This will give you the gift of charity buff, which increases your speech, which will then mean you get an extra 10% gold when you are selling these items. So it's just a good way to make some extra gold. And also make sure you grab a companion as early as possible as well, because they can basically be an inventory mule for you and just carry around all of your goods that you don't want to carry around yourself. And also, as a last tip, don't buy equipment yourself. Actually save your gold for things like training or any other benefits that you can get. Training is where most of that early game gold should go to level you up very quickly. However, you can buy things like potions, which will also help you out in the long run. Moving on to a very early free house that you can get called the Alchemist Shack. You'll find this location round about the other side of the mound to Helgen, and you'll mostly go near this place of Ivanstead just by following the main quest, but you can go down to this alchemist shack and just store all of your goods here and have a bed to sleep in if you do want that until you buy one of the houses like Bree's home or any of the other houses in the game. Moving on to combat tips, we're going to start off with our bow users out there. The bow bash is actually used for a stagger. It doesn't do a huge amount of damage. However, if you fire an arrow and then immediately bash, you'll do significantly more damage. It seems that the damage calculation includes the bash as if it was an arrow. I don't know. Skyrim things, I guess, but it works. So it will do extra damage. When you're using a one-handed weapon, after you have done a power attack, you will swing faster for your next two immediate strikes. And if you're using a two-handed weapon, these are pretty slow, but they do have a very high chance to stagger the enemy, especially the Warhammers. Daggers are also the only truly silent weapon in Skyrim. So if you want to be a silent killer, make sure you have a dagger, and then you can run around and silent stab everyone. The elemental spells and enchantments do have other effects other than just dealing damage damage. By default, without upgrading them in your upgrade trees, the fire spells will increase damage enemies take while on fire, shock spells reduce the enemy's magicka, and frost spells will decrease their stamina. These effects also apply to the weapons themselves when you enchant the weapons. Make sure you're buying potions and cure disease potions in the early days so that you can get rid of diseases that do follow you around. If you do find any hawks and you can shoot them down, their feathers will actually cure your diseases without having to make a potion as well. And now we'll move on to some leveling up tips. And in the initial stages, very very early in the game, you'll see these guardian stones, and for the most part, you will pick one here. But you should always be returning to these if you're going to change up your playstyle. Say initially you're starting out as a warrior, you want to pick the warrior stone for the XP gain to those skills. If you're going to then change to a mage, you want to pick up the mage stone. There are other ritual stones throughout the game as well that have different effects, but when you're leveling, make sure that you are using the corresponding stone so that you get the extra XP. And you can also get extra XP boost from sleeping in an inn or a bed for eight hours to get well rested. This will give you more experience boost as well. Well, skill books that you find throughout the world have a high gold value. So if you're not sure if a book is a skill book or just a regular book, look at the gold value. If it's significantly higher around the 50 or higher mark, it's definitely a skill book. Magic skills only gain experience if there is an enemy around, even restoration spells. So you have to make sure there are enemies around, then you'll actually gain experience in those spells so that you can keep leveling them up. And don't ignore crafting and enchanting lines as well. They can help you gain so much more of a head start to the enemies you find through 
throughout in the world and choose a play style initially. Stick to some kind of a concept, whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be, you know, the stealth archer that everyone loves. I've been playing with a one-handed weapon and magic in the other hand initially is my initial play style, leveling up destruction and one-handed skills as well as light armor. You want to choose whatever your initial skills are going to be and hard focus on them so you can level them up quickly, increase your combat power overall so that when you find those high level enemies as they level up with you, you can actually fight them kind of 1v1 without too much teasing or pausing the game and just smashing down a bunch of food. And questing tips. Now, it's a common practice in Skyrim, but I would highly suggest you not to fast travel. You do want to explore, travel around the world. There's tons of little activities and things that'll just happen as you're exploring. And it's kind of the best part of Skyrim, to be honest. Unless you are hard role playing as a specific type of character, you should be joining all of the factions, the Dark Brotherhood, the Thieves Guild, the Companions, the College at Winterhold, or the Mages Guild. You want to join every single faction and do their quest lines because not only is it a good time and it's enjoyable to experience the content the game has, they all have great rewards at the end for doing them and they don't really lock you out of doing any of the other paths like some other games. You can really just do them all freely unless you're doing some kind of a role play in the game itself. If you are looking for stuff to do, if you head to any of the inns or taverns and talk to the innkeeper, ask them about any rumors, they will tell you something or a location to investigate or a quest thread that could possibly lead you onto other quests. They will tell you something that you can then go investigate in your own time so you don't have to worry about trying to find things out in the world. They'll just give you a thing that you can kind of focus on and head out to do. And if you're trying to collect all of the shouts after you've done the initial Greybeard's quest, you can ask Arnger to tell you where the different shouts are located. They'll tell you where the ones that aren't specifically quest related, so just the random dungeons that you can find that have a shout at the end. They'll tell you where you can find all of those. And it's time for some secret tips. Now, you can view anyone's inventory as pickpocketing without taking anything, and it's not technically a crime. Don't ask me why, I didn't make the game, but you can pickpocket anyone and not take anything, see what they're carrying without it actually being a crime, even if they're directly looking at you. It's only once you take something from the inventory that it's technically a Stop. crime. It's also possible to have infinite stamina and be able to infinitely use power attacks and shield bashes and never run out of stamina because it only needs one stamina in order to be able to do this. You do this by crafting either the vegetable soup or the venison stew, which by the way, you should be crafting food. It's uh, really valuable for you to use rather than potions and some of the other effects it can give you. But these two foods will give you a stamina regen for 720 seconds because you're always going to have at least one stamina. You technically have unlimited stamina, so you can constantly cast power attacks or shield bashes. And when you're mining, you don't want to press E or whatever the button is for your keyboard just to mine on the mine. It is a very slow animation. It takes forever. If you equip the pickaxe and just swing at the iron ore, you will get all of the resources without having to go through that slow animation. It's so much quicker. You don't lose out on anything and it just speeds up that entire process for you. As you are exploring throughout the world, you're going to be finding tons of flowers and salt piles and fire salts and all these different things that are ingredients. The best way to find out what ingredients do is as Weird Old Yankovic would say, eat it, eat it. it'll tell you exactly what it does by eating it. Then you can kind of get a general idea of what the item is for. So you can then use it in alchemy and craft some various potions with that item. And there you have it. Let me know if you'd like more content for the Skyrim Anniversary Edition in the comments down below. Follow my social media. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel and thank you for watching this video till the end. My name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.